So here's another interesting thing that we get from the sturm liouville uh, formalism. So by writing our operator in, in this uh, standard form for the, the eigenvalue problem, let's take a look at what happens here if we multiply through by y. So we get this expression right here. Um, and then um, we integrate. So I'm going to have the uh, integral y p y prime prime dx plus the integral uh, q y squared um, dx and on the other side minus lambda integral y squared dx and I'm going to convert everything here into L2 norms um, and solve for lambda. So let's see what we've got. Uh, so I do an integration by parts. And so I'm going to uh, take this prime and move it on to the other y. And I'll have to pay for that with a boundary term and a minus sign. And so the boundary term is going to be my uh, pyy prime. Um, so that'll be evaluated on the boundary. And then I have minus the integral of, and then I'm going to have two y primes in there next to p. So this will be y prime quantity squared. So it's a little awkward, but oh well. Um, and then uh, the rest of this stuff will be uh, just as, as it was um, on the previous line. OK. Now let's solve this for lambda. So. Uh, multiplying by a negative and shuffling some junk around. Um, what do we get? We have the integral of uh, p y prime squared minus q y squared dx. And we've got that integral uh, uh, boundary term shuffled to the other side, p y y prime. And this whole thing is going to be um, divided by y squared dx. And so this is what's known as the um, Rayleigh quotient. So um, this is, in, in a more general context, ul u over U, U. And so, as I said, this is called the uh, Rayleigh quotient. So, <coughs> uh, this allows us to learn a lot about the possible values of lambda, and you can even use it to compute them, even um, uh, by numerical approximation. So, for example, um, the eigenvalues are going to be uh, the minimizers of this quantity. And then if you subtract out the corresponding um, eigenvector and re rinse and repeat, sort of, um, it, when I said this quantity, I mean, it's easiest to think of it in terms of this one, right? Find the, find the u that minimizes this, and then that will give you an eigenvector from which you can compute the eigenvalue um, via this formula. And then uh, pull it out so that you're looking at the orthogonal complement uh, of that eigenvector and do the same thing again and again. Anyway, it gives you a, a variational procedure for numerically constructing eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which is handy and useful. Um, also, these, uh, this is referred to as uh, an energy method because this, this term right here is uh, what's known as the Dirichlet energy um, of u. And so uh, this, this expression that we obtained here at, at the end, that this is the energy of u with respect to the form L. And then on the bottom, we have the uh, L2 norm of, of u. OK, so then. Let's look at an example of what we can deduce 
uh, f about a Stern with Uville problem by looking at the Rayleigh quotient. So if we look at something like we've already done, like maybe this guy, um, and we'll take boundary conditions of say y prime at zero is equal to zero, and uh, y at l is equal to zero. So we're working on the interval from zero to l. So in a setup like this, we've got uh, p is equal to one, and q is equal to zero in this context. And so if we look at um, p y y prime. Um, the, the, this boundary term is going to vanish at both ends of the interval um, by our uh, boundary conditions right here. So, so the y prime kills it at one side, y kills it at the other side, because I've got um, both uh, a y prime and a y in this expression. So this guy is going to be 0 at either end of the interval. And then that means that our um, Rayleigh quotient just looks like the integral of y prime quantity squared dx over integral y squared dx. Um, so this is uh, also we can we can write it like this. Um, <coughs> okay, so what does that tell us about the spectrum? Well, let's see. Um, first off, it should be pretty clear that the spectrum is going to be non-negative because everything over here has been squared. Secondly, um, can it be the case that lambda is equal to zero? Is this possible? Well, this is only possible if um, the norm of y prime squared is equal to zero, but that would imply that y prime is equal to zero, but that would imply that y uh, is a constant. Can y be a constant? Well, uh, going back to our boundary conditions, um, it would have to be the constant function zero based on this boundary condition right here. So that tells us then that um, uh, y is identically 0, which, which would be a contradiction. So we know now that y, or sorry, lambda, the, uh, the spectrum, has to be strictly positive. And similarly, if you go back to the boundary conditions, and then let's just like mess around with them. Um, if I took the derivative off here and um, so that it's equal, it's the, just the function that's equal to zero at both ends of the interval, then you still see that this holds, and all of the rest of the, the reasoning works, and once again, we have that the spectrum is going to be positive. So I can put the derivative on the other side. Um, I can even put the derivative on both of them, but then be a little bit careful. Uh, that last step doesn't quite work. So if we go down to this point here, we, we get all the way up to here, and, and we can infer that y is a constant. But then we can no longer infer that it's 0. All we know is that the constant function has 0 derivative at either end of the interval. And that's fine. So that there's nothing wrong with lambda equals 0 as an eigenvalue. And in fact, you can have a constant function as your um, as one of your eigenfunctions. And this is exactly the case. So uh, for this particular combination, this is, this is uh, Neumann boundary conditions. And this will lead you to uh, the Fourier cosine series uh, for your function. And the Fourier cosine series includes a constant term out in front. So in this case, you actually get that the uh, spectrum is not strictly positive, but just non-negative.